Okay, so I'm sitting in the sunshine in uh, Cuba, and I'm feeling really good, and I'm doing a lot of soul searching, because everything we do in life is about the soul growing and learning and moving forward. So I'd like to share this with you, because these are the notes that I, even though I was in the sunshine, <laughs> I was working on. And I want to start with what the mind dwells upon. The body acts upon. You know, I beat you up sometimes. <laughs> I know that. I get it. All of us come from somewhere else. We're all beings of light who were sent here to grow and learn. Choosing a physical body to be a sacred lodge and how that sacred body provides a mirror to everyone we come in contact with. My grandson Thomas is the new generation. I've seen him on occasion as he sees someone he's never met before and runs up and embraces them. We were recently at the shrines on Simcoe Street for an open house, and as we entered the building, he spotted a gentleman in a beautiful red sports jacket and ran up and gave him a big hug. He was the president and one of the greeters on behalf of the Shriners. This gentleman was taken back with how loving Thomas was. I knew that Thomas recognized him as a kindred soul, full of love for children in the world. It is a recognition of one love soul to another love soul. On the other hand, I watched him in Cuba when someone was trying to be friendly, and he would pull back and refuse to acknowledge them. He was recognizing that either they had a lot of negativity around them or a lot of anger in their heart. He therefore wanted nothing to do with them, and refuse to communicate. We recognize one another through our eyes. It is the window to the soul. The, those of us who are feeling isolate, isolated, feeling adrift on a vast expanse of lonely consciousness, yet understanding many things that others seem blind to, we will find one another. We are children of an awesome force, and the test is to find our way through the strange, unknown wilderness in many ways. <coughs> Our test is to find our sisters and brothers and support them in whatever way we can. Our first lesson is to understand we're here to learn, grow, and find our way back to God, or our, in native terms, the Great Spirit, or as I always like to say to the masses, to the God of our understanding. <laughs> this is all about soul growth. As children, we learn that we often have to take chances to learn, grope around in the darkness, skin our knees, bump our heads. As we get older, we discover that we may have our hearts broken over and over again until we fully want, uh, we truly learn what we want, or perhaps I should say, what is really in our best interest. When your light becomes greater than the darkness, then the darkness disappears. How can there be darkness when the sun is shining? Sometimes you don't realize what you have until you lose it. This is one of the greatest lessons of any lifetime on the part of our spiritual growth. So take the time daily by using your mind to fill every cell in your body with divine light. Open your heart to that light. When you've learned the lesson, you've learned it forever. You only repeat it over and over again if you haven't learned. This is spirit's way of helping the soul to grow. People think that they can control one another, but in actual fact, in the depths of things, no one can control anyone except themselves. In controlling another person, you lose the very thing that you desire because in controlling people, you're never really sure if they would be there on their own. One has to learn to trust the process, the goodness of spirit. In a sense, there's nothing we can do to make things happen, to make things grow how we think <coughs> they should, our way. A belief is only a thought you can continue to think. A belief is nothing more than a chronic pattern of thought. And you have the ability, even if you try even just this little bit, to begin a new pattern to tell yourself a new story, to achieve a different vibration, to change your point of attraction, 
It's all up to you. Where you go is about your thoughts and how you think things should go. Be open to spirit. Your higher self knows everything you need to know. We can move away from abuse, harm, or impending danger. But in the affairs of the heart, when love is within you and shared, then you wait in many ways. Sometimes to make a choice is to divide your power. And when it's not in your best interest, it can be very difficult. So you must recognize that there's only oneness of love in the universe. So all choices should be made from a love within perspective. When you make a choice to change a point of view, life changes from darkness to light, from weakness and pain to power and to inner tranquility. How many have found that? When they found someone they truly loved and it was good, there was such a peace and inner tranquility that it was much easier than any other way they had. There's a connectedness to God or the Great Spirit when this happens. When your heart opens to love, you change, grow, and are open to new learnings and experiences. It is difficult for some people to accept that love is a choice. This seems to run counter to the general accepted theory of romantic love, which expounds that love is inborn and as such requires no more than to accept it. Hooey. This theory believes that love is a magical force which frees us from all suffering and solves every problem, and that it's an end unto itself. To a limited extent, there may be some truth in each of these beliefs, but having the capacity to, uh, to love is not the same as having the ability to love. Love means to commit oneself without guarantee, to give oneself completely in the hope that our love will produce love in the person we love. Love is an act of faith, and whoever is of little faith is of little love. When you love the self within, there's a state of being that is a special power within and in the other realities. Yield to love, but start by loving yourself. We all make mistakes, Love <clears throat> comes when you learn to move forward and recognize that this friendship, <clears throat> relationship, job, etc. is not where you belong. In maturity of spirit, you begin to put into place how to deal with it. I've had to reevaluate my life many times in many areas of my life. Is this my, in my best interest? Why am I doing this? Who or what am I doing this for? or trying to accomplish. <coughs> this is spiritual growth. We all must do this in all aspects of our life. We have to walk our talk and be honest with ourselves before we can help anybody else, or for that matter, love anybody else. I repeat many times, how can you love another if you don't love yourself first? On occasion, I've had to walk away from jobs opportunities not in my best interest, even friendships. When I felt betrayed and hurt, I state, I can forgive you in my heart, but not in my mind. I cannot pretend that what happened did not mess up our friendship, but I don't know that I could ever trust you again, so I must move on. There's a good line for everybody. Yeah. Evil is simply a fact. It's a state of being. <clears throat> it's a negative energy. Trust is also a state of love. In friendship, you give love and understanding and light, but you give it knowingly. In asking to be a friend, it is an honor. Please do not abuse that friendship, or I will withdraw it. How, lo how long you live on the planet is your choice. We need to understand that the greatest gift of a lifetime for any soul is the possibility of enlightenment, and it is within reach of anyone, in any lifetime, if we but choose it. We're here to learn, wake up, find the essence of one spirit, remember who we are, and eventually in some lifetime, reach a state of perfection. This is said in so many different ways, 
poetry, <coughs> through art, through songs. You only have to listen to know that everyone is speaking to us. Are you listening? This is by design. It is what we have chosen. We need to learn balance and awareness in all of our choices. We have a choice. If we choose the absence of spirit and a life of materialism and greed, then we fail Mother Earth, which will falter and die, just as we shall do. The physical world, through free will, allows us the lesson in materialism instead of spiritual as a choice, to become lost in the darkness of power and to possibly be lost forever. Only through love can you heal the darkness that threatens us and our world. The other choice is love and light. The most extraordinary gift of love is what you can give, and it's important to honor how that gift changes someone. In keeping your heart open, you help those you love to enter into situations and experiences they never would have seen or felt on their own. That is how the gift of compilation is offered. You can only fill the void by extending your energy to them. When you're truly filled with the whole, there is a sense of completion in loving someone. You have the whole, whether it's a partner <coughs> or a friend. You have completion. There's a oneness, a unity that happens when you truly <coughs> love someone else. When a person chooses materialism, everything is about focus and personal power so that they can manifest choices. These people choose loneliness because of greed and envy. It is what gives them strength to go on. It's not a good place to be. But each of us needs to know what it means to be lost in greed and envy as well. When a person is full of envy, they can't be creative or inspired. They can only stand in their own way, creating shadows of their own misery. There is no way you can communicate because their need to control is so profound that they cannot ever let themselves be close to someone. When you are creative, then nothing is impossible for you. You are capable of your greatest work and conjure up the most healing and loving ways to present yourself and beauty surrounds you. Light becomes your servant. Each of us weaves a different tapestry. When love, is, when love encompasses you, you are working on soul love. You change your cellular structure and return, you change your karma. To be whole, you must embrace your duality. Both poles, which is unconditional love. Our parents' love is for maybe our only experience of unconditional love that goes beyond that duality. We must learn to love our inner circle in unconditionally in a much bigger way and developing and caring on very profound levels. I'm talking about your family, your friends, those that you work with. We have to learn to love, to over overcome all of the negativity around the others. When we do it from a perfect heart, from a perfect loving place, it can only help them grow. <coughs> Through understanding our relationship to an awareness of the greater spirit within us, love is not separate from you. It is a part of you. You are made of love. There is no separation. The blood of your spirit is always the blood <coughs> of your spirit. The blood of your body becomes the ashes of Mother Earth, becomes death rebirth, and a rebuilding. Success in life could be defined as the continued expansion of happiness and the pro progressive realization of worthy goals. Success is the ability to fulfill your desires with effortless ease. And yet success, including the creation of wealth, has always been considered to be the process that requires hard work, <coughs> often considered to be at the expense of others. We need more spiritual approach to success and affluence, <coughs> which is the abundant flow of all good things to you. I shall shape my future. Whether I fail or shall succeed shall be no man's doing but I am. I am the force. I can clear any obstacle before me 
or I can be lost in the maze. It is my choice, my responsibility, win or lose. Only I hold the key to my destiny. I have found the paradox that if you love until it hurts, there can be no more hurt, only more love. And I leave you with that love.